<laughs> it's Talking Pints. And it's the first... I'm looking forward to this. And I'm, jo I'm joined by... I'm somewhat intimidated. I, I, but I'm, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, before I properly introduce you, yeah. let's see a clip of White D in action. Over the course of a year... I'm pregnant! Get off. Through good times <laughs> and bad... Move on! Life on James Turner Street... I've never lived without my kids, ever. ...would be challenged like never before. It's not all about money. You could have all the money in the world and have nothing compared to what we've got around here. There we are. White D, welcome to Talking Pines. Great to see you. And you too. Great to Thank see you. you. Thank you. <laughs> now, your comments at the end there were about community, something you feel very strongly about, and yeah. we're going to get to that. How did Benefit Street pick you? What, how, did, how did it all happen? They just picked a road and you were part of it? What happened? It's really sort of kind of surreal, really, because apparently, <laughs> apparently they were scouting in the local job centres um, to see if they could find anybody who sort of had the community spirit. I wasn't scouted in a job centre, but I think whoever was, they kind of like just went round the whole street in the end and they were kind of like, you know, would you like to take part? We're doing a documentary on community spirit. And you and, saw a camera and said, yes, please. Do you know, <laughs> it was kind of like, you know, I'd had my hair done and my nails done and uh, it, was, it was just kind of surreal really. and then they just ended up spending 18, you know, 18 months yeah. practically living with us all. And, I mean, the programme just exploded, didn't it? It was one of Channel 4's really big successes. It really, really did and I don't think anybody, including Channel 4, expected the reaction from it that, that they actually got. No, well, you became a national figure. And there you are, all over the newspapers. Nigel, the show aired at nine o'clock at night, and yeah. at half past ten, there was a traffic jam of, <laughs> of, of cars, people, news crews, everything outside on, on the street, knocking on our doors. Yeah. We were absolutely petrified. And not everyone was nice to you? No, no. You know, you're on benefits, you've sort of got a, a, a bit of abuse for that, I guess. Do you know, we, we, we got qu a lot of abuse for that. Um, and, and again, it's kind of, you know, I suppose you don't realise when you've never been in the public eye, yeah. you've just took part and you've just been aired in one of the biggest documentaries of its time. So obviously, you know, you are going to get a reaction. But I suppose before that, when you don't know what social media is like, you only know what people are like in your own little circle, to then be inflicted to kind of pure, vile hatred from, from, from the whole world, um, I know what it feels like. Exactly. <laughs> 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 We've got it covered. Um, but then, you know, but in a way, that hatred was, it was kind of outbalanced then by the niceness because there was also so many people out there who kind of saw past the kind of, you know, well, hang on a minute, they're just normal, but, everyday people. But, Dee, to be chucked into this. Yeah. As you say, people knocking on your door, tabloids wanting all sorts of unpleasant stories, all the stuff that goes mm. on. What, when it was over, were you, were you given support, were you given help, or were you just used and dropped? Do you know, and I think this is the thing, it's kind of because nobody actually expected the reaction that it yeah. got. We had ex-SAS security parked on either end of the road because obviously there were threats to kill, threats to kidnap, Horrible. you know what I mean? Yeah. It was kind of like, yeah. you know, and things like that. But... No, the support kind of, you know, and I, I'm still adamant the support wasn't there. Yeah.